That was Sawa Sawa by Beatrice Omari, one of the artists that we had just uh, in the past month. Such a fantastic song. You know, it is her, it is her debut song and she's doing so well. She, is, she has such a fantastic voice. So if you are an artist and you're looking to just grow your talent, just do something good and ultimately your opportunity will actually come and we're actually looking for you. You know, if you're an upcoming artist, you know, put good music out there and you'll be able to propel yourself in this music journey. Don't just put music that can be banned as what we have just seen uh, with Alvindo's song that was banned after three months of being on YouTube and getting a million views. But um, this is Good Morning Kenya. My name is Jen Wamboy. If you're just joining us, Karibu Tena Sana. Uh, we want to get started with the second interview for the show. And remember, um, before we even get to this, Easter is just around the corner. And what KBC has done, we have partnered with the Panari Group of Hotels to make your Easter all the more better uh, if you are, you know, um, what all you have to do is just share with us your Easter experiences. How have they been so far? Have they been so good you want to keep that, you know, that uh, streak going? Or they have been, you know, up, down, left, right, center? Share with us your Easter experiences. And you never know, you could be one of the two people who actually get to have a fully paid weekend getaway mm, at the Panari Resort in Nyahururu. Unapele kwa nyahe. Unaka usiku hizo. Everything available, my God, just for your Easter weekend. Or you could be one of the four who actually get to win the four dinner vouchers, courtesy of Panari as well. So talk to us using the hashtag Easter with Panari, and you never know, this could be your best Easter yet. We did it on Valentine's for you. Why not again? Hashtag Easter with Panari. All right, so let's get started with... Um, this next, next discussion and if you are a young person and you are looking to get into business and you do not even know where to start, um, you're just looking to get some sort of sense about how to go about your life, you are in this state of confusion, this interview is for you. To help me with this discussion, we have Joyce uh, Gikonjo. She is an author, an inspirational speaker, as well as a coach, um, just dealing with especially the young people, the millennials. Karibu sana to Good Morning Kenya. Thank you, Jane. We're glad you made time to be with us this morning. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. All platforms. Give us your social media handles. Oh, my God. At <laughs> Gikunju <laughs> uh, Joyce. Um, that, and that is, at Gikunju Joyce is Twitter. Mm -hmm. For uh, Facebook is Joyce Gikunju. Yeah. And um, what's the other one? For you Instagram? millennials. Instagram at Gikunju Joyce. Gikunju Joyce. So yes. if you just type uh, that across all social media platforms, you are bound to see her. Now, before, before we get to your journey as a person, let's just, um, there's this one line here in your book where you say, you know, we are walking on gold here in Kenya and we don't realize it. What does that even mean in the first place? Thank you, Jane. That is a quote by one of the titans covered in my book. Her yeah. name is Joanne Wangi Yolbert. Joan Mwangi Yolbert is the CEO of Professional Marketing Services Group. Mm -hmm. Joan says that everybody in Kenya is working on gold. That means that you are on a gold mine. You have opportunities, you're sitting on them, you're sleeping on them, you do not realize it. And that is what we're telling millennials. This book helps you unearth your personal gold mine. You're that gold man you're walking on. Mm -hmm. Now, she is the author of this book. It's called The Bouncing Back and Thriving. Um, it goes on to say, A Titan's Secrets to Rising, Thriving, and Staying on Top of Your Game. It's so business-minded. I love it so much. It's just from the way you are, from the heading in itself, bouncing back and thriving and being able to stay there on top. Now, you have featured about nine um, different people in this book, uh, the nine titans. Yes. We will be getting to just getting to know a bit more about them. But let's just try and go back to why did you even decide to write such a book even in the first place? The reason why I thought of writing this book, first of all, the, ti the, the main title is Bouncing Back and Thriving. Yeah. Is because a lot of Kenyans are an entrepreneurial lot mm. and there's also a lot of statistics around business failure that businesses fail in the first three years years yeah and what happens to most people when their business fails they don't try to bounce back they go back to employment they go back to employment mm -hmm. so i discovered that a lot of these titans that we admire even in africa it, you know we we have a lot of books about the titans of other 
countries, especially developed countries. And that's the other reason why I wrote this book. Mm -hmm. We needed to know about Titans, local Titans, what is their back story. Yeah. So I discovered that all the Titans that I interviewed mm -hmm. have a failure story. And the best part of this is that they're willing to talk about it. They are not to ashamed share. about it. Yeah. And that is one of the secrets of success. You stare failure in the face and you overcome it. Mm -hmm. And that is how you become a titan. So today, you fail. Tomorrow, you're a, you're a titan. Yeah. That, that is one of the secrets. And I loved it because um, no, nobody there was ashamed of the failure story. And they said that for all of them, if they did not fail, they would not be a titan today. They would not be where they are today. They would not be where they are today. Now, you also talk about millennials in this book. You know, um, their mindset, which I actually, you wrote in your book, they have this mindset on business and life. You want to think big, you start big, and you make it overnight. What is it about that that is so flawed that is not realistic, realistically possible? Because it is not a tried and tested formula. Yeah. The tried and tested formula, and everyone will concur, is that in business, there's no elevator to the top. Everybody agrees that you have to take the, the stairs, stairs yeah. and you will encounter the barriers. But you know, with millennials these days, they are just, you know, breaking all forms of what is considered normal. There are, there are those who actually just started a business and, you know, it picked. Mm. But for, for some, um, that's how they think everything should always be and it, sometimes it actually works but the thing is with millennials they have these new ideas that they're most of them are not really understand is it their fault or is it the generation before them that is failing to understand them and all their diversity that's a very good question Jane um, or is it the fault of the society as a whole I am not faulting anybody I'm not blaming anybody actually millennials don't realize that even the way they think differently and do things differently, differently yeah is one of their gold mines. The reason why we are in a continent that we discuss, you know, excuses like you said, mm -hmm. oh, you know, Africa is poor because of slavery, someone came and stole our gold, they mined our this, they did a blame game. Mm. If millennials continue thinking differently, they will not be looked, I don't find millennials blaming. I see them doing things differently. In my opinion, they are the generation that could mine the gold. And I mean that. Um, Both metaphorically and yes, literally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the fact that they think differently means that the generation that is going to move Africa from developing to developed. Yeah. Because they have an entrepreneurial mindset. And if you look at all the developed countries, yeah. the reason why they are there is not because of people who go into employment. No. No? It's because of those who start they're those who go support. into business yeah. and scale and stick there through thick and thin. That is the difference between a developed country and a developing country. Yeah. So the fact that millennials think differently for me, I think is one of their gold mines. Yes. And that is why I wrote a book targeting millennials. I'm telling them, you guys are okay. People are complaining about you. Imagine you're okay. They're just misunderstood. You're you misunderstood because the other people think differently. Yeah. They think, the fact that they even think like an entrepreneur, it means they are the people, they're the generation that will turn this continent around. Mm. Yeah, mark my words. And you know, as opposed to the age of our parents, even yesterday we we're just having that discussion now. You know, back in the day, ukitua mm. campus unaitu ufanye hi. You had no say in what you're going to do. As opposed to now, there are all these new courses that you guys are like, that, what is that even? Yet mm -hmm. it is something that actually can take care of this millennial for the long run because that is where they are headed. Now, um, let's just go back to the journey of even writing this book. How long ago did you start just putting these ideas together and looking for these titans? Mm, the journey started, let's say that it starts in the mind. Yeah. Oh, it started when I was in primary school. Yeah. The journey of thinking that I would become a writer started in primary school. Oh, wow. I went to a primary school where they were big on English. So good. <laughs> and, and that's why, you know, for me, I knew I was going to be a writer that, at that point in my life. Uh, fast forward to me thinking about this particular book, the title and everything, is exactly a year ago. A year ago. Yes. What space and you know, mental and physical space were you in at that moment? Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, so I had just had my contract ended mm. and I thought to myself, where is my gold mine? 
So as I was signing my release, I was thinking to myself, this is my time to unleash this gold mine I've been sitting on all this time. Yeah. It is my time. But I needed structure around that. So yeah. what did I do? I looked for my success coach. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I called my success coach and I told him, I need, I need guidance. I need to move in a direction. I'm not sure where it is. But by the end of 90 days, I was very clear in my mind what I wanted. So that's the beauty of uh, having a success coach. They know you, they guide you, and, and that is what he did. And coming up with the title, we sort of did it together. Yeah. yeah, we sort of came up with the title together, like you said, you, you know, because the thing about a success coach also, they are able to unearth you. What is a success coach even to start with, mm. just to, for the benefit of our viewers? Okay, so a success coach is a person who sort of studies you, they know the, your strengths, your weaknesses, mm -hmm. and then from there they seek out an opportunity to bring out the best in you. Okay. Yeah. They bank on your strengths. Yes, they bank on your strengths. Okay. Yes. So you reached out, you were able to just brainstorm in a period of about 90 days? Yes, actually it's a course that you take, it's called hard your brilliance mm -hmm. yes and that in that space that's when you came even with the topic uh, the title for this book yes mm -hmm. yes that's that's what happened and now came uh, comes the writing process mm -hmm. how was that even in the first place even sourcing for these nine titans that you have featured oh. in here you know these are not just kawaida people yeah. like eh hey, uni tampata hapa kwa hii roundabout uni tende ile junction nyingine najua na kuanga hizo my area no <laughs> yeah that was the toughest bit yeah um luckily like i said gold mine Technology, yeah. LinkedIn, social media, Facebook. I mean, these people are everywhere. But even if you get a hold of them, they have no idea how their diary looks like. So yes, they can tell you I'm available, but they now refer you either to their publicist or their personal assistant so that they, they can try and slot you in. Yeah. That is where the, the challenge is, was. Yes, that is where the challenge always is. They try and slot you in and then, you know, it, it, things change. Sometimes the Titan travels. And yes, you want to have a face-to-face -face interview also mm -hmm. because you also want to get a sense of this person. And being, doing a face-to-face -face helps you get a good sense of the person you're dealing with. And yeah. also for me, I was looking at certain character traits that, that needed to be checked, ticked in a box. Like in you needed future, to see for yourself. Yes, because also remember that these millennials, they will need guidance. If they ask me, can I get Titan so-and-so to help me in this area? I want, I want that to be a possibility. I don't... Yeah. At, at I, um, a millennial to think, um, I want to, I want Flora Mutai to tell me about how to infuse tea to make a good flavor tea. And then Flora Mutai is no longer available. I was thinking to myself, if I get people who have a sense of humility, even if they have gotten to their top of their game, that is the kind of person I want to deal with. So mm. yes, the, the person, each of the titans had to tick that box. You know, and yeah. you had to do that for yourself. You not be told by yes. somebody like, "Oh, we are Nakwanga Mzuri. Yeah. They're very nice." But you know, mm. when you get to meet them, it's yes. an absolutely different case. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, even for you know, for most writers, actually, they complain of a phase where you know you get this creative block. Mm -hmm. It's called the writer's block. Yes. Did you experience that in any way? Yes, I did. Um, I remember towards in November. Mm. November, nothing was going on. In fact, in December, I, I had switched off completely. You just sit at your computer and you're just staring it. Yeah. Staring at it. I didn't even bother. I, I knew that that season had arrived, so I was doing nothing. I wasn't even bothering to write. And then remember the kind of people I'm dealing with also? Yeah. They take international vacations. So. Yeah. We're in yeah. a vacation here by local. On a Chizaki International. Yeah, so getting them also. Was a bit hard. Yeah. In November, December? Very hard. Yeah. So you had you actually had to put it on pause because of yes. their schedule. Yes. All right. What were some of the other um, you know challenges that you actually faced in trying to just put this um, idea that you had, you just bring it into life, you know, bring this idea into fusion because you're trying to talk to a millennial. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm thinking of, um, for example, I someone like okay. There are some people you see on TV and and they're amazing and you want to interview them, but you don't get a hold of them. Yeah. You waste a lot of time and energy, mm -hmm. even getting up, up to the point of, I've gotten the interview, it's tomorrow. Then you get a last minute cancellation. And that happens. To, and you're thinking to yourself, okay. Ah, you had already started building the book around the idea of who that person is because you already know what they, what character they embody, what mm. they stand for. Mm -hmm. So you sort of have to uh, rearrange the blocks again. Like, who else can fit in here? Who else? That is hard. Yes, who else 
speaks to millennials and listens. Yeah. Who else is an entrepreneur? Not necessarily a business owner. And that's the other thing that we need to discuss here. Yeah. What is an entrepreneur? It's not necessarily that you're a titan because you're a business owner. You can, yeah. There are many ways of being an entrepreneur. And that's why you should buy the book. Because if your business failed because you are a business owner, how else can you be an entrepreneur without being a a business owner and I think that is where most actually entrepreneurs get it wrong you might be good at you know mm -hmm. selling the product or the service but you're not good at running the business yes and you need to realize where your strength lies if you're good in you know being the entrepreneur bank on that mm -hmm. if you're good at selling the product or mm -hmm. the service bank on that and look for help or for yes. the former exactly but that is where most entrepreneurs and young people go wrong because you want to do everything mm -hmm. and you cannot do everything yeah now um let's just uh go through the book kiddo um, it is a three-part book. It's a three-part book, yes. Yes. Uh, why don't you take us through the different parts that are there? Mm -hmm. uh, if I could just get to... To the table of contents. Yes. Um, mm. Now, the first part is talking about bouncing back. Bouncing back from what exactly? That's a good question. Bouncing back either from failure, insurmountable odds, setbacks, like maybe a government policy or... Uh, Arson, in the case of, of one of the titans, bouncing back from con artists, uh, bouncing back from, um, in the other story, it's a story about, because there's George Washiri who bounced back from failure 15 times. 15 times. 15 times. Trying the same thing? Trying different things. Different things. Yes, trying different things. And he was a married man. I mean, how was he taking care of his family? So what that kept him going? Exactly. And that's why you need to buy the book yeah. because... Even I am baffled by people like him. What kept him going? 15 times after one, two, three times, most of us are like, you know what? Let me just do the eight to me. five. Yeah. yeah. So he bounced back from failure about 15 times. Mm -hmm. um, you also feature Sarah Karingi. Yes, yeah, Sarah Karingi uh, bounced back from arson, death of a spouse. Mm. Yes, and they were happening in close succession. So it's just bouncing back from whatever setback that you may have experienced in life that you were not even seeing coming in mm -hmm. whatever angle, whatever possibility possible. Exactly. Bouncing back from all these challenges that life gets to throw at you. Mm. All right. Now, the second part is about rising and thriving. Now, I think this is where most people actually mm -hmm. struggle. Yeah. Because after you have gone through something, yes, you take the time to just pick yourself up. But now moving forward mm. is where most people struggle. Yes. What is it that you are just trying to help people understand when it comes to rising and thriving from, you know, what you have gone through? So now you've already bounced back. Now you're in business. You're, a, you're either an SME or a micro uh, SME. How do you move your business forward? How do you scale the business? Because you also don't want to be in a space where you have gone past startup, 3.8 years are over. Mm -hmm. Now you're thinking, okay, I have not failed. How do you scale? How do you move to the next level? Who do you run to mm -hmm. for help when you're experiencing your stuck yeah. points, your pain points? What is it that you go through every day, every month, every year? It's like the same thing over and over again, but you don't seem to move past it. Mm -hmm. So the people who are covered in this section. I can see you have Susie Wokabi. Yes, Susie yes. Wokabi just came in from the diaspora. You know, there's a time when Kenya was doing so well, yeah. when a political regime changed and a lot of Kenyans came back home. Yeah. And they came back home and they were looking out to see what can I do. Set a up good shop, yeah. Set up shop. A number of them went into employment and they complained, oh, you know this, oh, you know that. <laughs> but the s there are those who said, I am going to try something. So for Susie Wakabi, for example, she came in and she was doing makeup. Yeah. And she got frustrated at some point where her makeup was running out. And when she goes to the shop to look for makeup, the, the makeup is like it three. Actually, it is three times. Over the top. If, you, if, you've, if you've shopped in the U.S., they do times three. The, ma the makeup on most things is times three. Yeah. Yeah, so she said, you know what, that's, that's not good for business. So out it's of not that, sustainable. It's not sustainable for business. Yeah. So one day she just tells her husband, I'm going to make my own makeup. And the rest, as they say, is history. You have to read in the book to <laughs> get to know how she actually got that. Yeah. And uh, James Karundu. So James Karundu was actually a lecturer at Kenya Polytechnic. Mm. As in Kenya Poly, you know, Ke we, we when it was Kenya, Kenya Poly. Poly. <laughs> yes, when it was Kenya Poly is when yeah. he worked there. So he wrote his uh, resignation letter and uh, kept it in his briefcase for two years. Wow. But he knew he had a gift. He was a math teacher, and every time before he starts teaching math, everyone in the class was looking like, hey, teacher, math is hard. So he'd start giving them a pep talk. 
and you know when he gives them a pep, pep talk now he notices that their their mind shifts and now they are ready to learn math the attitudes just whew, yes turn around so he did that and people started loving his class you know how it is in campus when you have to choose the class that you're going yeah. to go into people started loving his class because of the pep talk and then he actually realized that he also loves it he actually loves talking yeah and giving a pep talk and he started enjoying that more than, than teaching. teaching so he'd prepare for <laughs> class and he'd also prepare for the pep talk <laughs> and he realized oh my gosh i'm liking this so much do you know today he is actually my success coach oh wow he mined his gold mine <laughs> yeah in the oddest of place in the oddest in trying of to help some students you know just love math yeah here you are discovering yourself as well and when he was trying to resign from the university people were telling him gosh you're going when kenya poly is becoming a university, a mm -hmm. fully-fledged university. People thought he was out of his mind. Yeah, but look who's uh, smiling now. Who's <laughs> laughing now. Everybody's journey is different. Yeah. That is what we need to realize yes. in life. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, the other person who also featured in this uh, part uh, of Rising and Thriving is Trusha Ketia. Yes, Trusha Ketia is a millennial, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, Rising and Thriving, it takes time. He yeah. did not start the other day. He said when he was a child because he grew up, you know, like most Asian families, in a business so he grew up looking and learning mm. yes and that is what for him made it easier yeah to keep going regardless of the odds yes all right now um the third part of the book is about just staying on top you have known how to bounce back from part one mm. part two part two you have written you know, learned how to rise and keep thriving and now maintaining that streak staying on top of the game which is the hardest part for most as well. Mm -hmm. Now, here you have um, Eric Kimani, um, the wind of change, blue success his way. What is that about? So Eric Kimani, um, we, we know Eric Kimani, actually, most people know Eric Kimani as an inspirational and motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. And he was, um, he was a CEO for many years. Yeah. And even when he was still doing that, people, what most people didn't realize is that he was moonlighting. So by day, he has a, a day job, he's a CEO, but at night, yeah. he's setting up his own business. business. Yes. So he's using what he's learned at his place of work. In the corporate world. Yes. Yeah. To set up his own uh, business. So he owns uh, Palm House Dairies. Oh, wow. And now the interesting thing about his story is that um, people used to, people, it's in Gidongori, and people from that area used to come and you know, your child has passed school, they've been called to Form 1, and you know high school is expensive in Kenya. It's more expensive than university education. Mm. So they'd come knocking on his door and say, you know, my child was called to a national school. Please give us some money so that at least admissions. You know, getting your child into the school yeah, is usually what you... Admission yes, fee. Be before they lose the slot to somebody else. Yeah. So people would come borrowing money. So that happened so often until one day he sat down and thought to himself, you know, how can I help these people like on a on a permanent uh, basis. basis because what he learned later is that he'd help them with first term fees by second term they're third back. term not their back mm. they cannot afford that school anymore so the child is removed from a good school to a day school and that would break his heart imagine yeah. if you're called to alliance and then you you know next term next uh, next year your mother cannot afford, afford uh, your fees. parents cannot afford school fees yeah. so you, remo you, you remove the child from there and take them to a day secondary school which you can afford so when he had that, he's like, you know what, I am not solving a problem. So out of discovering that, he hooked up with his friends and told them, you know, we need to do something permanent. We need to pay th this school fees for the four years. Mm -hmm. And he gathered his friends and you know Things what? Things started happening. Things started happening. You call a friend who calls a friend who calls a friend, and then now they started looking for those children. Who you needed know, such who assistance. Who needed such assistance. So he used his networks as a CEO, and then, do you know Palm House Foundation, every year they, they do a fundraiser, and they take kids through the four years. And Today people Palm come in numbers to yes, give? Yes, yes, I'm telling you, so many corporates come to give. Palm House Foundation sponsors, is one of the foundations that sponsors the largest number of children in this country. Now they're in their hundreds, and remember it started from one problem, one someone year. knocking on the door, give me school fees for one term. Today, it's a fully-fledged foundation. And people give millions to the foundation because Eric Money has proven that he knows how to take care of money and it actually gets to the person who needs it. 
knowing yeah. how to take care of being accountable of that money that you know people are willingly giving you to help somebody else's yeah. uh, life but you know the thing with um, people tend to you know ukiona umepewa pesa nyingi na mtu na unajua ni wewe hakuna mtu mwingine anakukipa accountable you tend to want to go the other way but we're glad we have such people who actually know what this money is for and actually stick to it mm. all right now the other person is a joanne mwangi yelbert walking on gold so joanne mwangi yelbert is <laughs> she she was also in employment by the way yeah and then she saw a gap staring at her you know there was no one offering offering professional marketing services when she was in employment yeah and she thought to herself why can't i do it fill this gap fill this gap and that's how she started? And that's how she started. So again, opportunity is staring at you. Just need to look around you. You know, there's this song, you're walking on sunshine. Kumbe, you're walking on gold. Now, the other person you have is Chris Senanu, a serial preneur who roars in the lion's den. Yes, that so is very heavy. Yes. Those are heavy <laughs> words. <laughs> so we all know the TV show called uh, Lion's, lion's den. den. It's yeah. the equivalent of Shark Tank, for those who love uh, watching foreign mm, programs as well. Mm -hmm. So Chris Ananu, like Joan Mwangil, but is a lion who rose in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. KCB, it's a TV show. And um, Chris Ananu also is one of the people who discovered that, yes, he, li he loves entrepreneurship, but he discovered the hard way also that he's not a business owner mm -hmm. because his businesses failed and he did a lot of introspection. And then he realized, you know what? And this is when he was doing his MBA. So you see, one of the things that you have to do when you're staying on top of your game, you have to go back to school and you have to learn to look at yourself every day and ask myself why, why am i failing mm -hmm. why am i failing and then he realized i'm failing because i am not a business owner i am i'm better off investing in ideas yeah. and staying